I'm here with Noel of Mental Cruelty to talk about the new record. I I'm not going to try to pronounce it because I, I know I'm going to completely butcher it. Uh, <laughs> no worries. Uh, I I'll let you do. I'll let you do the pronunciation. I'm, I'm not even going to try. But the new record is out June 23rd on Century Media. How's things with you? Uh, very good. Uh, we are very hyped for the record uh, that is finally coming out. Uh, it time went by so quick. Like I remember when we started to uh, started with the with the recording of uh, Symphony of a Dying Star with the music video and everything, and it feels like it was yesterday. But it was in January. Time went by so quick, but we're all really happy. Uh, the album's coming out in three days on Friday, and yeah, we can't wait. Since you mentioned that song, let me ask you this: Are you guys big Winter Sun fans? Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> because you when can I hear it. That song, I was like, okay, if if Winter Sun was to release a deathcore track, this is how it would sound like. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to mention that because I, I think that's that's one of the outstanding tracks on this record, a record that has many, many outstanding tracks. Now, as a band, did you guys set goals for what you wanted this album overall to be like before you even started the recording process? Um, not really. I mean, we have always like a, a big picture of the record. We always strive to to write a record we've never wrote before. You know, we always want to bring something new to the table. And uh, yeah, the plans we had for that record was just to put all our influences into one record, create something new, uh, try different things. Uh, and that's always uh, our main goal, to create something new, something unique. Uh, yeah. You, you guys work with Josh Schroeder. Um, exactly. You work with bands like Lorna Shore. Just to, to mention one that everybody watching this will know exactly uh, what kind of guy he is. Uh, is. Is there something that he gives the band, the sound, that makes him an integral part of what this record needed to be? Oh, definitely. I mean, we started working with Josh uh, on our last record, uh, On a Hill to Die Upon. And... Uh, we were looking for a new mixing engineer and we didn't really knew who would do it in the end. And uh, there's a band called Numenorian. Uh, they're not together anymore, but uh, yeah, it was a great post black metal band. And I really loved that sound. And I was like, oh, let's check out if if that guy who, who mixed that record would be down to mix us. And Marvin, the other guitarist, was like, ah, I'm not sure if it fits the music. Let's check who mixed Lorna Shore. And jo Josh did both, you know, <laughs> so it was uh, pretty easy to choose him. And yeah, definitely. He brings so much to the table. Uh, I always make sure I, I can send him the best stems possible, you know, or the best multi-tracks possible, uh, because I think it, it's, it is really important to make his work, uh, I would say, easier, you know, because uh, there's nothing worse than like sending multi-tracks out to a mixing engineer and he's like ah oh, you have to fix this and that and i was making sure everything is perfect you know and uh yeah at, at the end he he creates so much new stuff in the music like all the production things like all the impacts and uh cool vocal effects everything he has so much ideas and when you're listening to the demos and then like to the finished record uh, there is so much there's so much stuff that sounds totally different and he's really creative in that sense and also a really really nice person awesome human being i i just love him <laughs> so let me ask you this working with him once again not the first time for you guys second record in a row that you guys are working with him knowing the impact that he's had on Lorna Shore's sound is there ever a, a little bit of a fear that then your sound and their sound becomes a little bit too much of the same not really, because I think while we uh, while we have some uh, some oh, how do you say it? Uh, while we have some similarities in the music, uh, I think we have a lot of stuff that is much more different than their music, and uh, yeah, I, I totally get get it because I I mean it's the same genre, uh, black and deathcore, 
but I think we have a lot of different stuff on the record, especially when you when you think about songs like Zwielicht or Symphony of a Dying Star. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can definitely hear that he mixed it because of all the impacts and all his signature sounding uh, sounding samples, you know. But at the end of the day, he always makes sure that your band sounds unique. And that, that's what I really admire about him. Because you can listen to every band he has mixed and every band sounds totally different, you know? This is so, uh, yeah. Lucas' uh, debut record with you guys. Mm -hmm. What kind of impact did he have uh, on this album? Obviously, outside of singing, but did he have a, a part in the process, in the creative process of the record? Yeah, definitely. Uh, we finished all the instrumentals and... Uh, uh, also on some songs, on Norlis, for example, uh, we had that last riff, uh, that black metal breakdown, <laughs> most people call it. And uh, yeah, it was actually half as long in the beginning. And he was like, oh, let's let's uh, repeat it again. And uh, stuff like that. He, he has an ear for it. And also his lyrics are very uh, different to our previous stuff. And uh, but yeah, his creative process was awesome. He always had great ideas, uh, always came prepared. It was really cool. So I heard from someone that you were the one that did some of the clean vocals on the record. Is that true? Yes, exactly. W will we get more of that? Because I honestly felt like you guys gave us not enough. Let me just put it that way. Like you, you, you kind of showed us what you got but then you took it took it away and you walked away <laughs> with it and i was like <laughs> because you start off like the second song on the album you have some clean vocals on the track but then you don't get any more until later really later down the line almost at the end of the album and i felt like maybe there was a little bit room for more because it was really good is this something that you will expand upon in future albums perhaps i think yes uh we, we are at the point where i think we we found uh our sound and we know what we want to have in the future, you know, and uh, while we were writing that record, uh, Zwielicht, it was, uh, we, we actually did it before on A Hill to Die Upon, but n not so many people noticed it. Uh, we had it on, uh, I think on A Hill to Die Upon, on Ultima Hypocrita, uh, on Abaddon, uh, I'm not sure. On, on some songs, we had clean vocals, but like not, uh, we didn't really expand it. And then we were like, oh, let's try it again on that record. And I used to be a vocalist on a, on one of my old bands. And yeah, it, it fits pretty well. And I mean, all the music I listen to has clean vocals in it. I, for example, I love Flash God Apocalypse, Timo Borgir, Emperor, Winter Sun, obviously. And it's I, I think it's so important to to have clean vocals in your music for me especially because i think it tra transports you into another atmosphere you have different emotions in the music emotions you can't really get with gutturals and uh, it speaks different to the people i think uh, so yeah we definitely gonna have some more clean vocals on the next record <laughs> it, it definitely gives you more tools. It allows you to create different exactly. songs. It allows you to do a lot more. You're not putting into a box where you can only use one style of vocal approach. It just gives you a lot more to, to play with. And I thought you guys yeah. used it perfectly. It just felt like maybe one more song, one more, one more <laughs> needed, needed some clean yeah. vocals. Now, we'll get it on the next record. <laughs> <laughs> for you personally, how has been your growth as, as an artist uh, when you look at, at the span of albums and everything that the band has done? Uh, yeah, it, it feels great. I mean, it's, it's a lot of hard work and it, it, it's getting exhausting, but, uh, you, you, you know why you, why you're doing it. You know, it's for me as a musician, the most important thing is, uh, like when, when I look back, when I was a little kid, the first time I came in contact with metal was with, uh, Metallica, St. Anger, <laughs> And uh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I love the record. I, 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 I get why people don't like it because it doesn't sound like your typical Metallica record, but it was the first metal music I came in contact with and I loved it. And 
after Saint Anger, I listened to all the other albums like Ride the Lightning, uh, Kill 'Em All, All Master of Puppets, and uh, I I always remember that moment when it clicked, you know, and my mind was like, oh my god, I need more of it. It feels so good, and I want to give the people this kind of feeling. And if I know that there are some people on this world who are like, oh, your music helped me so much, or uh, I had a tough time and your music helped me to get through it. That's the biggest uh, gift I can get as a musician. And I think that's something that really uh, makes me want to be a musician. And yeah. Do, do you try to push yourself or set bars for yourself from record to record? Like on this album, I'm going to try to do this because it's something that I need to improve on the next album, you know what? On this one, I'm going to do this other thing that I really want to do. Are you that kind of a musician? Do you look at the records also from a personal standpoint as far as, as moving the bar? Definitely. Uh, I mean, it was with The Hill to Die Upon, now with Zwielicht as well. I'm listening to it and I can enjoy it, but now I hear all the flaws and all the uh, sections I would have loved to uh, revisit, you know, but... Uh, it's important for me to always progress, to always create something new. And also on this record, I wrote some stuff I don't even can play, you know, and I had to, to play it slow in the beginning and then speed it up uh, because I'm actually not that good of a guitarist. I'm a pretty good rhythm guitar player, but when it comes down to lead stuff and everything, I totally suck. And uh, yeah, I, I grew up with, playing Metallica, Pantera stuff, uh, Slayer. And I never got into all the technical stuff, you know, because my the music I listened to was always very rhythm driven. Mm -hmm. And uh, but now I tried it on that record on Zwielicht and it worked. It was hard work, but it worked. And uh, so, yeah, I definitely going to try to uh, to progress on the next record and to, yeah. Get you, some you, mentioned, you mentioned the words hard work. Was this album a lot more hard work than A Hill to Die Upon? Uh, I think yes. I think yes. Uh, I, I think it took the same time to write it. But uh, like I said, it's exhausting because I think it took nine, eight or nine months. And uh, Marvin and me, we are, we are working nonstop on the music. We There are weeks like days and days where we wake up at 10 in the morning and we go to sleep at six o'clock in the morning and repeat it on the next day four hours of sleep and that for weeks and it's super exhausting and it's really hard but it always pays off in the end and yeah i i mean it's hard but we love it it's a hate and love relationship <laughs> let's call it like that Another element that I really enjoyed on this record was the acoustic guitar sound that you guys used on, on a few tracks. Now, for, for a genre like deathcore, is there room for more acoustic guitar sound on, on tracks? Definitely, because we don't, uh, we don't uh, limit ourselves to, to genres. Uh, if we hear something that we admire, we're going to put it on the record. Uh, the clean guitars actually were... Uh, inspired by an Argentinian guitarist. Uh, he's called Paco de Lucia. And uh, my dad used to listen to him uh, a lot when I was a child. And uh, we had one day where we were sitting uh, outside and listened to some music. And I put some Paco de Lucia in. And we just felt it at that moment. I was like, why not writing something like that as an intro? Uh, and it worked. So we're definitely going to have some more acoustic stuff uh, in the future. Also, stuff like, uh, I don't know if you know them, uh, Ulver, uh, old black metal band from Norway. Uh, they have one album just like uh, clean vocals and acoustic guitars. And it's it's beautiful. And like I said before, it gives you another vibe, another atmosphere. And uh, I think it is important to have a lot of layers on a, on a record. Uh, so the record is still interesting and is not like, okay, that song sounds exactly like the song before. And, you know. Yeah, it, it's it, to me, that's what makes the album tick. You need to give the, the record this ability that it doesn't matter if you listen to it for the first or the hundredth time, 
you still feel like there's something that you didn't notice before that creeps up and sure and, and, and pops up. I think that's really important on any album. I, I got to ask you this about the genre with bands like yourselves, uh, bands like Lorna Shore, Up Sulfur, for example, that uses a lot of clean singing on, on their record. Deathcore seems to go in a direction where there is no ceiling. It's really it's up to the individual bands on what they want to do within that genre and what they want that genre to be. Does that make you feel excited about the prospects of the future that you're not stuck in playing the same style, the same songs, the same breakdowns over and over and over and over again? Yes, of course. I mean, I, I think it's it's a natural progression. It happened with every genre at some point. I mean, if you listen to to modern black metal and old school black metal, you can hear it. Like all the bands in the 90s sounded kind of like the same. I mean, all of them had something different to bring to the table, but uh, the core of it was basically the same. And now you have bands like Dimo Borgir with the orchestration or bands like Der Weg einer Freiheit from Germany uh, who doing a, kind of a post-black metal uh, thing which is really emotional and really uh, really tragic sounding and uh, I think it is important that the music progresses and uh, and yeah like, like you said it, you, you get new tools to work with and it makes the music unique and I think I speak for everybody when I, when I say nobody wants to hear the same record like year after year after year so I think it is a good thing Now, outside of Deathcore, is there any bands right now that you're listening to on a regular basis that really inspire you? Outside of, of the Demo Borg years and the Winter Suns, maybe something a little bit more underground. Is there something that you're listening to? Uh, yes, a lot. Uh, I, my favorite album at the moment is actually uh, Johnny Cash, Life at Folsom Prison. Oh, I didn't see uh, that coming. <laughs> I think it's a great record. I, I love his voice and I, I, I love the songs, the lyrics and everything. But uh, what else? I'm, I'm listening to Fusion Bomb as well a lot at the moment. Uh, thrash metal band from Luxembourg. Uh, totally underrated band. These guys are fucking killer. Uh, if you haven't checked them out, check them out. They're really good. Uh, let me think. What else I'm listening to at the moment? A, a lot of old stuff. Uh, Except I'm listening to a lot of Except at the moment. Uh, Metallica, Slayer, uh, Sodom. A lot of thrash metal, actually, at the moment. All the classics, I see. All the classics. Yeah. So let me ask you this last question. Uh, with the album coming out June 23rd on Century Media, uh, what are the next plans after this album release? Do you guys have some tours in schedule? Are you planning on, on coming to North America at some point in time? Because let me tell you, the deathcore genre here is is the next big thing. It, like it's, it's crazy. People here love it. So well, what are your plans? Uh, we have some concerts planned in August. Uh, we are playing some shows with uh, Heaven Shall Burn. Oh. Uh, I think we're playing two shows with them uh, and some festivals here and there. Uh, Talminator in uh, Slovenia, I think it is. Uh, and another one in Belgium. But not a lot of uh, concerts. And we want to take it slow because... Like I said, it was really exhausting all the time. And also the music videos and everything and promotion. Uh, everything takes a lot of time. And we're all super happy when the album's finally out. And I think we're going to chill for a little bit. But uh, we have some plans for the future uh, musically and maybe uh, with concerts and everything. But still have to figure some stuff out. And we will see. <laughs> Hey, I, I hope to see you guys on this part of the world at some point in time. Like I would said, would be awesome. You know, on a tour with you know, you guys can bring your friends from Heaven Shall Burn. I would be more than happy to attend that show. Like, I oh yeah, see, I would love to see those guys too. But I, I must tell you, like uh, the scene here is really strong when it comes to deathcore. So uh, definitely, I yeah. If you guys came here, you definitely would have had a great time. Uh, you'd have some packed shows. Uh, but for now, we'll have to wait for that. So in the meantime, people can go and check out the record, play it, listen to it, buy it, exactly. Spotify it, whatever it takes. Just get your ears on it. You're not going to regret it. It's a great album. I was really blown away by how good this record is. So thank, thank you, you very, very much. much for taking the time today. Thank you very much for having me. It was a great interview. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, man. All the best. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.